Hello, Hello Sean Lancashire. Diddy Combs. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. Do you like being scared? One makeup artist was quoted as saying that when he tried to make small talk with Ellen, she supposedly said, who do you think you are? Don't look at me. What if one of the most beloved figures in daytime TV is more connected to the recent scandal rocking Hollywood than we ever imagined? Ellen DeGeneres and Sean Diddy Combs have been rubbing shoulders for years, but what if there's more to their relationship than meets the eye? With the recent shocking accusations against Diddy, people are now looking back at past interactions between the two in a very different light. Could Ellen's playful nickname for Diddy, Cuddle McSnuggle Stuff, Carry a much darker undertone now that Diddy's personal life is under intense scrutiny. Ellen's alleged bad behavior had been whispered about in the industry for years. Let's dive into the swirling rumors surrounding Diddy's infamous parties, the resurfaced connections to some of Hollywood's biggest names, and how one of television's biggest stars might be tangled up in a web of secrets that no one saw coming. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, maybe I have one at your house. Where's the... <laughs> first things first, Ellen DeGeneres. Known for her bubbly personality, she's always been quick to joke around with her celebrity friends, and Diddy is no exception. But as Diddy faces a whirlwind of accusations involving coercion and shocking behavior at his private gatherings, Ellen's public comments about him have resurfaced, raising eyebrows. In one particularly bizarre tweet from 2016, Ellen wished Diddy a happy birthday, calling him cuddle, McSnuggle stuff, and adding, you don't need to know why. Now, at the time, it seemed like just a lighthearted, quirky comment, right? But with all the allegations pouring in about what Diddy's been up to behind closed doors, some are wondering if there was more to that nickname than just a joke. Could it hint at something deeper? There are some problems that are the defense has brought up originally, but it seems like, just from reading this 14-page indictment, that there is enough physical evidence to perhaps get a conviction in this case. We well shall see, these are allegations. Ellen and Diddy have crossed paths countless times. Whether it was at glitzy Hollywood parties or on her show where he's made multiple appearances, they've seemed close. And let's not forget, Ellen is known for throwing her own parties and Diddy has even been a guest at one of these gatherings. Back in 2018, there was an episode of Ellen's show where she practically begged Diddy to make sure he didn't arrive late to her upcoming party. In the clip, Diddy jokes about his fashionably late arrivals and Ellen insists, not too late though, please. Once you get there, the party really starts. The playful banter made for good TV, but looking back now, it's chilling to think what might have been going on behind the scenes. So tell me about your birthday party, am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. To no, well, there. What if Diddy wasn't just arriving late to these parties to make an entrance? What if the real action was happening in the hours after the cameras stopped rolling, when the guests who stayed a little longer got to see a different side of the hip hop mogul? This is where things get murky, and the recent allegations against Diddy have people re examining those seemingly innocent moments. That he controlled every aspect of her life. He is accused of frequently beating her and would hide her in hotel rooms for days until the bruising and signs of abuse were gone. And it's not just Ellen. Diddy has been a staple in Hollywood's elite circles for decades, and his parties have long been the stuff of legend. But there's a darker side to these events, as we're now discovering. We're talking about the notorious freak-off gatherings, which have been described as wild multi-day affairs that allegedly involved some pretty questionable behavior. These parties are at the heart of the legal battles Diddy's facing now. And while the details are still unfolding, the whispers about what really happened at these events are enough to send shivers down anyone's spine. The rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein type deal where he was filming everybody. Right? That's the rumors, yeah. I don't know that there's any proof of anything other than that. The term freak off has taken on a life of its own recently, with insiders claiming that these weren't just your typical Hollywood parties. They were reportedly secretive, exclusive, and full of activities that pushed the boundaries in more ways than one. Diddy allegedly went to great lengths to ensure that these gatherings remained under the radar, with guests being carefully selected and everyone made to feel like they were part of something they couldn't talk about afterward. But why? What was so secretive about these parties that people wouldn't dare speak about them? Replete with very, very serious and salacious allegations, uh, including allegations that uh, Combs had cameras throughout his home. It's being said that some attendees, including those who were close to Diddy, didn't even know what they were getting into when they first arrived. Many are now coming forward with shocking accounts of how these events were conducted, suggesting that they were anything but innocent. And the names tied to these parties? It's a who's who of Hollywood. Big stars, household names, people you would never imagine being associated with something like this. But for now, they remain just that. Rumors? While no direct evidence has surfaced linking any specific celebrities to the more unsavory aspects of these parties, the mere mention of their attendance is enough to raise questions. 
could some of the most famous faces in the world have witnessed or been involved in what was happening at these gatherings? Diddy has been under criminal investigation for months by federal prosecutors here in New York. And if there are criminal charges, many of them may look a lot like what some of these individuals have been describing. That brings us back to Ellen. For someone so entrenched in the upper echelons of Hollywood, it's hard not to wonder what she might have seen or heard over the years. She's known for being friends with just about everyone in showbiz, and that includes Diddy. So was she simply an innocent bystander, or did she know more than she let on? This is where speculation starts to run wild, and while there's no solid evidence tying Ellen to any wrongdoing, the fact that her name keeps popping up in relation to Diddy's past is enough to make people wonder. But I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party though. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, let's talk about Cassie Ventura. Cassie, as you probably know, is one of Diddy's most prominent accusers. She filed a lawsuit in 2023, accusing him of years of physical and emotional abuse throughout their decade-long relationship. The allegations are brutal, painting a picture of someone who manipulated, controlled, and even physically harmed her. Cassie's account goes even deeper, revealing details about the so-called freak-off parties. According to her lawsuit, Diddy would go to great lengths to ensure her participation, and it wasn't always voluntary. Cassie claims that these gatherings weren't just about letting loose, they were something far more sinister, with many of the guests unaware of just how dark things would get until they were already in too deep. And then there's the surveillance footage. You've probably seen the video by now, leaked security camera footage showing Diddy and Cassie in a hotel hallway in Los Angeles. In the clip, Diddy is seen chasing her down the corridor before what appears to be a physical altercation by the elevator. It's grainy, and it's unclear what exactly is happening, but the video certainly seems to back up parts of Cassie's claims. And it doesn't stop there. Cassie's lawsuit also mentioned that Diddy would allegedly force her to participate in private activities that left her feeling powerless, adding yet another layer of complexity to this already tangled web of accusations. New at five, the legal troubles continue for Sean Diddy Combs tonight after a judge ordered the music mogul to pay $100 million to a Michigan man who says that he was assaulted by Combs in 97. According to court documents, Derek Cardello Smith says Combs and then assaulted him during an after party at a Holiday Inn in Detroit. But Combs never responded to the lawsuit in court. Now that these details have come to light, people are starting to ask more questions. What really went on at those parties? And how did someone like Diddy, who was once at the very top of the entertainment world, manage to keep these alleged secrets hidden for so long? More importantly, how many people knew what was happening and chose to stay silent? And Stacey, you say today's indictment reads like a mob indictment. What was most shocking to you of all these allegations? Yeah, the fact, Jake, that the government in, in this indictment presented evidence alleging that Sean Cones was running a criminal enterprise. It's no secret that Diddy has always been surrounded by a crew of powerful people. Whether it was his close friends, fellow musicians, or business associates, he's always been someone who people wanted to be around. And while most of us only saw the glamorous side, the red carpets, the award shows, the flashy parties, there's now speculation that there was a lot more going on behind closed doors. Could it be that the very people who were supposed to have these back also turn a blind eye to the things they knew were wrong? This is where the lines start to blur between what we know for sure and what's simply speculation. But one thing is clear, the allegations against Diddy are serious and they're not going away anytime soon. The more we learn about what allegedly happened at those freak off parties, the more we have to reconsider everything we thought we knew about the people involved. And with big names like Ellen DeGeneres, who has built a brand on being trustworthy and relatable, now being associated with someone under such heavy fire, it's no wonder people are talking. The Hollywood rumor mill is working overtime, and while it's easy to dismiss some of the speculation as nothing more than gossip, it's hard to ignore the sheer volume of stories coming out. For years, people have whispered about Diddy's wild parties, but now those whispers are turning into something much louder. And with more and more people coming forward, it's likely we haven't even scratched the surface of this scandal. With this newest lawsuit, this would probably only expedite or increase the amount of allegations and potential witnesses who could testify against Sean Combs. Cassie's lawsuit might have been the tipping point, but it certainly isn't the end of the story. As investigators continue to dig into Diddy's past, there's a very real possibility that even more more disturbing details will emerge. It's hard to say just how deep this rabbit hole goes, but one thing's for sure. The Diddy we see today is a far cry from the man who used to rule the music industry with an iron grip. As for Ellen, the jury's still out on just how much she knew, if anything. Her lighthearted nickname for Diddy might just have been a joke, but in the context of what's happening now, it certainly seems like an odd choice. Some have even suggested that Ellen might have been more involved in Diddy's social circle than she's let on, 
attending those infamous parties and brushing shoulders with the very people who are now under investigation. That clearly there is a criminal investigation underway and that they believe that there would be evidence of crimes in one or both of these homes. For now, it's all speculation. But in Hollywood, where there's smoke, there's often fire. And as the public continues to reevaluate Diddy's past through a new lens, the connections he made along the way, whether with Ellen or anyone else, are being scrutinized like never before. The shockwaves of these allegations are far-reaching, and as more people come forward with their own stories, we might start to get a clearer picture of just how deep Diddy's influence ran. It's a tale as old as time, money, power, and fame mixed with hidden truths and dark secrets. And while we might not have all the answers just yet, one thing is certain. This is one story that's only going to get bigger. With Cassie's revelations out in the open and more lawsuits likely on the horizon, the question isn't just about what Diddy did or didn't do. It's also about the culture of silence that allowed these things to go unchecked for so long. As Hollywood reels from yet another scandal, the focus will likely shift to the people who stood by and let it happen. And with someone as high profile as Ellen DeGeneres now indirectly tied to the story, there's no telling what kind of fallout we might see. Now, let's get into what happens next for Sean Diddy Combs. After all the scandal, the accusations, and the shocking revelations, the situation took a dramatic turn when Diddy was arrested and sent to one of the most notorious detention centers in the country, Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center. It's almost like something out of a movie. A man who once lived in mansions, attended by Hollywood's Alisters, now finds himself behind bars in a facility that's been described as nothing short of a nightmare. The stark contrast between Diddy's former life of luxury and his current reality couldn't be more jarring. And it's clear that this story is far from over. I've had clients describe MDC as hell, as the worst conditions they've been in. First off, let's talk about where Diddy is being held. The Metropolitan Detention Center, or MDC, is no Ritz-Carlton, that's for sure. Known for its harsh conditions, this federal facility in Brooklyn has earned a reputation as one of the most difficult places to be locked up. It's been called hell on earth by former inmates, and for good reason. Imagine cramped cells, constant lockdowns, and a complete lack of basic comforts like clean water and heating. That's what Diddy is dealing with right now. This is the same detention center that has housed other high-profile figures, including R. Kelly, Geislane, Maxwell, and cryptocurrency fraudster Sam Bankman fried But don't let the celebrity status of its inmates fool you. This is a brutal place to be, and Diddy is getting no special treatment. He's currently being held in the Special Housing Unit, or SHU, which is reserved for inmates who need extra protection. Sounds fancy, right? But in reality, this section of the jail is notorious for its strict isolation policies, where prisoners are confined to their cells for 23 hours a day. For someone like Diddy, who is used to being constantly surrounded by people and the finer things in life, this must feel like a total nightmare. And a lot of the evidence, alleged evidence, that's been gathered in this case was from those two raids that were conducted on his personal homes in Miami and Los Angeles. And the indictment names the, um, the, the things seized that, they, that he allegedly made videos of these performances as, mm-hmm. that have been named freak offs. But what's even more shocking is how quickly Diddy's life has unraveled. Just a year ago, he was at the top of his game, living in his Miami mansion, throwing extravagant parties and rubbing shoulders with Hollywood's elite. Now he's fighting for his freedom from behind bars. His legal team has been working overtime to secure his release, but so far, they've been denied at every turn. Diddy's lawyers have even offered to put up his Miami mansion as collateral, reportedly valued at a staggering 48 million currency units, but it wasn't enough. The judge in his case denied the request, citing concerns that Diddy could be a flight risk or might use his influence to intimidate witnesses. And with all the accusations swirling around him, it's not hard to see why the court is being so cautious. His legal team, led by high-profile attorney Mark Agnifilo, has been vocal about what they see as an unfair prosecution. Agnifilo has gone on record, calling Diddy an innocent man with nothing to hide, and expressing disappointment over what he claims is an unjust pursuit by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Agnifilo's argument is that this whole case is a witch hunt, a targeted attempt to take down a successful black man in the entertainment industry. It's a defense that has caught the public's attention and one that plays into the broader conversation about how the justice system treats prominent figures, particularly those from minority backgrounds. Does he have a shot? I think his attorneys raised some good arguments. I I think they raised good arguments as well. Maybe this will be third time's the charm because the difference between this bail motion and the prior two is that this one really does get to the heart of what the court was concerned about, which was witness intimidation. But the prosecution isn't backing down. Federal authorities are pushing forward with the case, describing Diddy as the leader of a criminal operation that spanned years and involved multiple victims. The indictment against him is long and detailed, outlining a pattern of coercion, manipulation, and control. According to prosecutors, Diddy used his power, influence, and resources 
to create a world where he could essentially do whatever he wanted, all while keeping those around him silent through intimidation and, in some cases, fear. They're painting a picture of a man who was willing to go to any lengths to get what he wanted, and they're not afraid to bring out the big guns to prove it. This is in the matter of Derek Lee Cardello Smith, um, MDOC number 267009 versus Sean Combs, Sean Puff Daddy Combs, also known as Sean P. Diddy, also known as Diddy. Bad Boy Records, label owner. But Diddy's legal team is pushing back hard against these accusations, calling them exaggerated and out of context. Agnifilo has said that the parties were no different from any other celebrity gatherings, with guests indulging in the same activities you'd expect at high-profile events. He's also argued that the prosecution's focus on these parties is an attempt to sensationalize the case and make Diddy look guilty in the court of public opinion before he even has a chance to defend himself in court. While the legal battle plays out, Diddy's current reality is far from the world he once knew. Locked up in the Metropolitan Detention Center, he's reportedly on self-harm watch, a common practice for high-profile inmates. His legal team has expressed concerns about his safety, not just because of the facility's dangerous conditions, but because of the toll this entire situation is taking on his mental health. According to some reports, Diddy is struggling to adjust to life behind bars, and his team is doing everything they can to get him out. That Those situations lend to maybe some issues with tampering, and I do feel like there are victims who are scared to come forward, including my client. She was very nervous about if he was going to get bailed this week. And once I told her and then come after people, including her and some of the other individuals, and she was a very relieved when he did not receive bail. But even if they managed to secure his release, the damage to his reputation has already been done. The allegations against Diddy have rocked the entertainment world, and it's hard to imagine how he'll recover from this, no matter how the trial turns out. His empire, which spans music, fashion, and various other business ventures, is already feeling the effects. Sponsors are pulling out, business deals are falling through, and the public's perception of Diddy has taken a massive hit. His net worth, once estimated to be in the hundreds of millions, is now in freefall, with some predicting that he could lose everything if the trial goes badly. Importantly, and most notably, when he walked inside the courtroom, the first thing that he looked at was his family. As soon as he saw his family, he just lit up. Another thing to note, too, is he wasn't shackled, but he was wearing a khaki prison-like jumpsuit when he appeared inside court, and his family appeared on their but Diddy's downfall isn't just about him. It's about the culture that allowed him to rise to power in the first place. The entertainment industry has long been criticized for turning a blind eye to bad behavior, particularly when it comes to its most successful figures. For years, Diddy was seen as untouchable, someone who could get away with anything because of his money, fame, and connections. And while these allegations are certainly the most serious he's ever faced, they're not the first. There have been rumors swirling around him for years, with whispers of questionable behavior going all the way back to the 1990s. What's different now is that people are finally starting to speak out. Thanks to the bravery of those who have come forward, like Cassie Ventura, we're starting to get a clearer picture of what might have been happening behind closed doors for all these years. And it's not just Diddy. His entire circle is being scrutinized. The big question on everyone's mind is, how much did the people around him know, and how many of them helped to cover it up? Yeah, that's uh, trying a criminal case in the modern times. A lot of evidence is on electronic devices, cell phones, tablets, computers, things of that nature. And the devices, especially if you have like external hard drives, I'm 90 something terabytes of data on a single device makes me think some type of hard drive. That takes weeks to go through just for one device on its own. Hollywood has a long history of protecting its own. And it's not uncommon for powerful people to have teams of loyal followers who will do anything to keep their secrets safe. In Diddy's case, there are rumors that some of the people closest to him were complicit to him were complicit in what went on at these parties. From his security team to his personal assistants, there are whispers that a network of insiders helped to keep things running smoothly, making sure that no one outside the circle found out what was really going on. Of course, none of this has been proven in court yet, but the rumors alone are enough to cause serious damage to Diddy's reputation. And with every new piece of information that comes out, it seems like more and more people are willing to come forward with their own stories. Whether it's former employees, guests at the parties, or even other celebrities who once counted themselves among Diddy's closest friends, the list of people willing to talk is growing by the day. I think, you know, we have seen many photos, videos of Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, you know, through the Associated Press, through Instagram. And so to see him kind of in person after being in um, jail for three weeks now was pretty interesting, to say the least. And I say that by being that you would expect him to feel a little defeated, a little gaunt, anything like that. But it wasn't that case. He appeared confident. He stood tall. But most importantly and most notably. And speaking of celebrities, let's not forget that Diddy's social circle reads like a who's who of Hollywood. 
Over the years, he's been spotted partying with everyone from Jay-Z and Beyonce to Kim Kardashian and Leonardo DiCaprio. His infamous white parties, where guests were required to dress in all white, were once the most exclusive events of the summer, attended by listers from all over the world. But now, those same parties are being viewed in a very different light. Were these glamorous gatherings really as innocent as they seemed? Or were they just a cover for something far more sinister? One of the most intriguing aspects of this whole scandal is the role of other celebrities who have been linked to Diddy's events. While there's no direct evidence that any of them were involved in the darker side of these parties, the fact that they were in attendance raises questions did they know what was happening behind closed doors? Were they aware of the allegations that are now coming to light? Or were they just as in the dark as the rest of us? Well, one of the things that's going to happen, and I do believe that there has been a grand jury investigation that has been employed in this case. I think there may be a federal investigation going on, and there may be a stateside one, but I'm not totally sure. But one of the things that the prosecution in any case is going to try to do is show that there is a pattern of behavior here. As more details emerge, the public is starting to wonder how many of Diddy's famous friends will be caught up in this scandal. The entertainment world is notoriously small, and it's notoriously small, and it's hard to imagine that none of them had any idea about what was going on. But in Hollywood, silence is often the name of the game, especially when it comes to protecting powerful people. Whether they were involved or not, the fact that these celebrities are being mentioned in the same breath as Diddy's alleged misdeeds is enough to make them nervous. I'm not going to talk about anything that I haven't said in court or in the papers. These are all great questions, but I'm just not going to get into it. So Can you speak about your concerns about the leak uh, and the video? You um, have spoken I, about that I, 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 I did. I did it in the court papers, and, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to stick to the court papers. As, as you guys all know, let me just finish. As you all know, I made a request today for what we were calling a gag order, and I'm I'm not going to walk out of court and do anything other than live up to that. So. Social media has been ablaze with speculation, with fans and critics alike sharing their thoughts on the scandal. Some are calling for other celebrities to come forward and speak out, while others are convinced that Hollywood will once again sweep everything under the rug. After all, we've seen it happen before. Powerful figures are exposed, the public gets outraged, and then a few months later, it's back to business as usual. But will that happen this time? Or is Diddy's downfall a sign that things are finally starting to change? There's no denying that this case has struck a nerve with the public. People are fed up with the idea that those with fame and fortune can get away with anything. And Diddy's arrest feels like a tipping point. The question now is whether or not the entertainment industry will finally take a stand against the culture of silence that has allowed people like Diddy to operate unchecked for so long. So what do you all think? Could this really be the tipping point for Hollywood's so-called culture of silence? And do you believe some of Diddy's famous friends knew more than they let on? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. We can't wait to hear what you think. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.